Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it written in our heart and mind. Thank you for the revelation you're bringing forth. We'll be hearers and doers of it and see the fruit of it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you on the subject of the Holy Spirit. And we talked about the last time about hearing and obeying the voice of the Lord. And we're going to talk more on that and also about the results of hearing and obeying the voice of the Lord. We pointed out Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, God who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the ages, not worlds. This shows the fact that why now is there a change? Because there's been a change in the covenant. We now are under the new covenant. And now Jesus Christ is the high priest of the covenant. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's the one who has accomplished the redemption. He's the one who accomplishes the work in us through the word of God. He's the word of God. And so now, these last days, everything is to be realized in light of the New Testament. That includes the Old Testament. You must look at it in the light of New Testament reality. We're not under the Old Testament commandments any longer. We're under the New Testament commandments. And we must understand that everything that he's going to speak will be from a New Testament understanding aspect. We talked about many things in the la first la before we were, last time we were together, and we're not going to go over those again. We're going to start out talking about what would hinder you from hearing the voice of the Lord. Certainly, if we're not walking in the ways of the Lord, we're walking in sin. He, we're not going to be hearing anything. We have shut him out. Isaiah 59, verse 2. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Well, if we're separated from him, we're certainly not going to be hearing from him. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. He's not going to hear your prayers. You're not going to be hearing from him until you come to the place of repentance. You and I must turn away from all sin. Sin will stop you from hearing the voice of the Lord and accomplishing what he purposes for you. We look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. When it talks about itching ears, this is referring to someone who desires to hear something pleasant. Tell me something good. <laughs> I want to hear something good. Well, that's the seeker-sensitive approach that many churches have done today in error. They followed that way which is wrong. We're to preach the whole counsel of God, to hold nothing back. These ones, they don't endure sound doctrine. Uh, they're after whatever they want to hear because they only want to hear good things that will do some benefit for them, and they don't want to hear about dealing with the situations that in their life that are not of God and casting out the demons and dealing with the sin areas. Notice, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. It's astounding how people will look to other sources outside of the Word of God for getting some kind of revelation or direction. These fables, we don't want, we shouldn't be looking at anything outside of the Word. The Word is the truth. And they turn away their ears from the truth to hear other things. Anything contrary to the Word of God, anything that is any writing or book that is outside of the Word of God is a fable, and you do not want to listen to it or look to it as a source of truth. And we know, even back in 1 Timothy, spoke about this. Chapter 4, verse 1, the Spirit speaks expressly, In the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, deceiving spirits, and doctrines of devils. Oh, they come that are contrary to the Word of God. Anything that is contrary to the Word of God or a mixture, part truth and part lie, is still a doctrine of the devil. And it will deceive us. We'll not be hearing the voice of the Lord. Instead, now we're in deception. And we hear heretical teachings. And, of course, that causes us to not be right with God whatsoever. 
We go over to Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that's weary. That's what he wants for us. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. See, as you get the word in you, when you wake up in the morning, God will be speaking to you. The word will be coming to you. He'll be showing you things. He wakens me morning by morning. And he wakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened my ear. I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. God will open your ears and show you things, speak to you things, give you direction, show you what he wants you to do. You will hear from him as you get the word in you and you are tuned in to him, ready to obey. And he says, I was not rebellious and I did not turn away back. We got to be ready always to obey the voice of the Lord. Another thing that's important that would, of course, hinder us to hearing the voice of the Lord, and we talked about this the last time, but we'll bring it up again. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. Well, we can't be spiritual babies. Why was this? He said, I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you're carnal. Whereas there's among you envy and strife, divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men or as normal human beings, people out there in the world? We are not going to walk after the carnal ways of the flesh. We're going to walk after the Spirit, being obedient to the Word of God and not allow ourselves to have carnal things in our life. That will hinder you from fear, hearing the voice of the Lord. Another thing that we see is we have to be hearing the voice of the Lord and be ready to obey what he tells us to do. Revelation 2, chapter verse, uh, two verse 7, all the, all, the, uh, speak, they're spoke, all the things that are spoken to each one of these churches in Revelation 2 and 3, they always end up with this part. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And remember, Revelation 2 and 3 is the judgment that's coming to the church. Those who will hear the Word of God are to hearken to it and correct all the problems because God knows your works. Your works show forth whether you're truly following Him or not. We must have ears to hear and be ready to obey and do the things that God wants us to do. Now, we must make sure that we're not hearing wrong voices. If we hear wrong voices, we're going to be deceived. And we certainly won't hear the voice of the Lord and see Him accomplish what He wants. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 22, there's where Peter said to Jesus, this is after Jesus had said to them that He was going to be killed and raised again the third day. Jesus speaks this, and now you're going to speak something against what He speaks? Jesus took him again to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Anytime we speak something that's contrary to the Word of God, it's the devil operating through us. That's exactly what we see. He turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Otherwise, Peter was the vessel for the devil to speak through him, speaking things that were contrary to the Word. This is why you must learn to speak right words. He said, Thou art an offense unto me. Thou savest, savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And he was focused upon the things that were of men instead of of God. You cannot be thinking on the things of men. You cannot be speaking things that are just for your own benefit or your family's benefit or for so-and-so's benefit or for something that helps you or favors you in some way if it's contrary to the things of God. Uh, that's not right whatsoever. People do that. They do things from their own perspective instead of doing things from God's. No. We cannot be minding the things, as this really means, the things that be of men. We've got to be minding the things that be of God, regardless of, you know, how, however it affects other people. We cannot be compromising the Word of God. That's a wrong voice people are listening to. And we see people compromise all the time in these areas. We must stop that. 
We see over in Luke chapter 4 also, wrong voices will be anything that comes, it's a temptation. Now the devil will come and he'll bring temptations. Here he said, if thou be the son of God, command the stone to be made bread. Jesus, of course, answered, said, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil will come bring all kinds of temptations, but you must recognize them and be ready to speak the word to deal with the, success, the successful resistance of all the temptations. That is so important. We have to conquer all temptations. We watch and pray, we won't enter into temptation. We also cannot be listening to voices that are contrary to the word, or strangers, or from the world, or, or from people that are, again, they have their own perspective. Uh, that's a strange voice. Only a voice that's in line with the word will be right. John 10, 5, a stranger will he not follow, but they'll flee from him. For they not the know the voice of strangers. We don't want to hear the voice of strangers. We only want to hear the voice of the great shepherd of the sheep and listen unto him. We cannot be following false voices whatsoever. We can't be following voices that are telling us based on our feelings or, or our, home, our desires, these things. No. We can never do anything to ourselves. You'll be following a wrong voice. You will not be hearing the voice of the Lord if you're hearing and responding to things from your perspective. And that'll be evident by what you're living into. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. And then he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him. Anything that's for self will be of the flesh, but anything that's unto him in line with the word will be what God has for us to walk by. We must be living unto him. We must put the Word of God first place. Certainly the right voice that's coming to you will be something in line with the Word. And whatever you hear, you've got to be sure it's in line with the Word. Acts 17, verse 11, remember those from Berea? They were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and they received the Word with all readiness of mind, and searched the Scriptures daily whether the things were so. You've got to guard yourself so you don't hear wrong voices. <coughs> Another thing that's important is we must understand the Holy Spirit is not going to originate things. We pointed this out before, but this is so important because many people, they hear a voice or they have somebody prophesy over them or speak something. If it's going to be something from God, it's going to be in line with the Word of God. It's going to come to pass. John 14, 26, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. It will always be in line with the Word of God. We saw this over in John 16 as well. Verse 13 and following, when it speaks of, how be it he, the Spirit of truth has come, he'll guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. Everything's going to be in line with the truth, and he doesn't originate things. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come, and he shall glorify me. He's going to glorify Jesus in everything. He shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He does not originate things. Another thing we must realize if we're going to hear the voice of the Lord, the right voice, it's never going to lead you away from righteousness or holiness or the ways of the Lord. It's never going to compromise things. We see in Psalm 60, verse 6, God has spoken in His holiness. He's a holy God, and He's going to speak in His holiness. He's not going to speak contrary to anything that's holy. He always speaks according to the Word, righteousness, holiness. He is a holy God. He, uh, there's nothing compromising about God whatsoever. So anything that's of compromise, you know it's not coming from the Lord whatsoever. And that is important because you've got to learn to discern between what's of God and what's not of God. What is of Him and, and what's not of Him. What's something that's trying to deceive you and what's really truly the Lord, the voice of the Lord coming unto you. Now the way He speaks to you, we've talked about this, but we want to cover this again. 
Proverbs chapter 6, we see in verse 20 and following, My son, keep my father's commandment, forsake not the law of thy mother, bind them continually upon thine heart, tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, this is the word in you, it shall lead thee, the word will lead you. When you sleepest, it shall keep you. And when you awake, it shall talk with you. The word of God will lead you, it will talk to you, and show you things that you must do. The commandment is a lamp, it's the law is a light, reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So everything's gonna be in line with the word of God and God's word in you will lead you, it'll speak to you, it'll show a light, it'll instruct you in the way that is going to lead to life. It is the more sure word of prophecy. If God comes and brings some word to you, as long as it's in line with the word of God and it confirms what God has spoken to you, great. But there's always the more sure word of prophecy that you'll never fail on. 2 Peter 1.19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. That's the revelation that comes forth. The word of God is what you need in you and what you need to hear and to do and walk by. Of course, also the Holy Spirit will speak to you He'll speak to you, bring revelation to you of the ways He teaches you, leads you, and guides you into all truth as we saw. But He'll even speak to you directly. Here's where the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot when He came and to minister to the Ethiopian eunuch who ended up getting born again. So He'll speak to you specific things. So He'll give you direction and He'll always lead you step by step. He'll also work through your mind as long as the thoughts that come to you are from Him. That's why you gotta have the Word in you and you gotta check everything out in line with the Word. We see over in Isaiah 55, in verse eight, he says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, they are your ways, my ways, saith the Lord. So His thoughts are not our thoughts, but when His thoughts come to us, that's one of the ways that He brings his revelation to us and his voice coming to us, but they're going to be in line with the word. They're not going to be your thoughts. They're going to be his thoughts coming into you to show you what to do. In fact, if you've committed your way unto the Lord, then you are in a position for God to put his thoughts in you because you're yielded unto him. Proverbs 16, 3, look what it says. Commit thy works unto the Lord. If you have committed your way unto the Lord, thy thoughts shall be established. They'll be set, they'll be firm. God will bring thoughts, which are gonna be his thoughts, coming into you because you have submitted to walk in his ways. Of course, remember, it's gotta be in line with the word, but he'll bring your thoughts to be established and show you what he wants you to do. At the same time, remember, if you haven't committed your way to the Lord and you're not really putting His Word first place in your life and you've just been walking after your own thoughts, <laughs> oh, you're, you're not walking right at all. You're not going to be hearing from Him whatsoever. Remember Isaiah 65 too. I spread out my hands all the day unto rebellious people which walk in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. They didn't get God thoughts in there to replace their thoughts. They walked after their own thoughts. No, you must always submit your mind to the Lord and get His thoughts in you. When you commit your way, then your thoughts will be established in because of Him bringing His thoughts unto you to show you what to do. He'll speak to you in those ways. Things will just come to you many times. They'll just be, come in your mind. You just know things. That's God bringing that up to you. He'll also speak to you with a still, small voice on the inside of you. 1 Kings chapter 19. And it won't be some strong, manipulating voice trying to for get you to do something, pressing you. Those that have a pressing voice, no. That's not the Lord. 1 Kings 19, 12. After the earthquake of fire, the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice that'll come on the inside of you. It was so when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in the mantle, went out and stood in the entering of the cave. 
I'd heard the voice of the Lord, he now knew what it was. The still, small voice will come to you. Not a pressing voice. Anybody that says they're speaking the things of God and bringing a pressing voice to you, a controlling, dominating type voice, uh, the red flag goes up immediately. You better, that's not the way of the Lord. He's not going to be doing those things. Many people might be well-meaning, but they can be off. You've got to be sure that you're hearing from the Lord. Isaiah 30, verse 21. Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Certainly when something is of God, God will confirm it to you, to yourself directly. This is the way. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand or you turn to the left. You'll hear a word. It seems like it comes out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, you'll, you'll hear a word or something will come into your mind or you'll know something. This is the way a lot of times that God will speak to you. You can't discern where it came from. But nonetheless, it was the Lord showing you something. We even see over in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. When he says, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Came out of nowhere when, God, when he was speaking to John and he was declaring who he was. God wants you to know that a voice that seems like it comes out of nowhere, it's in line with the word speaking to you. It's the way many times God will speak. We also see in Romans chapter 8, inner witness on the inside of you. It's like a knowing on the inside of you. Romans 8, 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. He bears witness. It's kind of a joint witness. You have a knowing on the inside of you. Many times you'll have a knowing of things. You just know it. It's just a knowing. It's coming from Him. So that's the way a lot of times you might have revelation of particular things that are going on because you'll have a knowing on the inside of you. And also, angels, just like they spoke in the Old Testament, they can, of course, speak to you in the New Testament as well, and they will do that. Here's where in Acts 8, 26, the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south in the way that goeth down to Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. He spoke to him to go, and then later the Spirit of God told him to join himself to the chariot. Also, while you're praying, God can be in a, just while you're just praying, whatever the situation might be, you might just hear the voice of the Lord. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Acts 22, 17, it came to pass when I was come to Jerusalem, even while I was praying, he prayed in the temple. He's praying and all of a sudden, what happened? He's in a trance all of a sudden. And saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. God showed up and showed him, You need to get out of here. God will warn us of things, and he will be on time on things to show you what to do. God can also will work to give visions, we know, visions and dreams. And we're going to talk a little bit about this. Revelation, or Acts chapter 2, that is. And verse 17, It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So we see prophecy, we see visions, and we see dreams coming forth. And this is throughout the New Testament era. It happened in the Old Testament, of course, but also happened in the New Testament era as well. We see one of the cases, which we even looked at before in Acts chapter 9, and we talked about one of the reasons why you'd be in a position to receive something like this from the Lord, because you're a disciple of the Lord, following Him. Acts 9.10, here was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. He was a true disciple, bringing forth fruit, walking in line with the Word. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. This is a guy who was following the Lord, ready to respond. He obviously knew the voice of the Lord, ready to hear and to respond to what he told him to do. And then so the Lord can speak to you in a vision and bring revelation to you. 
and speak specific things. Arise, go into the street, which is called straight, inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And he was going to lead him to minister to him, so he recovered his sight and was also for the anointing, the filling of the Holy Spirit, for the ministry that God was going to take Paul, or Saul, who later became known as Paul, to take him into. We also see in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius. Why was Cornelius picked out for the gospel to come to the, the Gentiles? Notice what it says in Acts chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. A certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. This is someone who was seeking after God as a, as a Gentile, and not in covenant relationship. Nonetheless, he's a devout man, one who feared God. That's the type of person that God will be able to, of course, come to. We come down to verse 9. On the morrow, as he went on their journey, drew nigh in the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. He became very hungry, would have eaten. We made a, if I made ready, he fell into a trance. Here's another time he's praying, and now, all of a sudden, God shows up, and he comes into a trance. And he has this vision where he sees the heaven open, and he sees the, the vessel letting open up with the four corners, letting down into the earth, and he sees all these uh, four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, unclean things, and so forth. And he said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And, of course, he knew he wasn't supposed to do that under the Old Testament law. He says, I've never eaten anything that's common or unclean. And he voice spoke again and said, what, has, what God has cleansed, call not thou common. And so that happened three times, trying to get his attention. And the vessel was received up to heaven, telling him something was bringing to, going to come to him to show him what this was all about. And while he doubted himself about what the vision was, that's when the men came from Cornelius' house that had came and they came to see, to get Peter to come to tell them words where they might be saved. And so they came and thought on the vision, and the Spirit said, these three, these three men seek you, go with them. And here, these words were Gentiles, and he wasn't supposed to be going with them. So he realized what God had said. And of course, what happened? He went to Cornelius' house, preached the gospel to them. They all got born again, received the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues, and the gospel came to the Gentiles. God wants us to know that He'll speak to you, and this is a case because he was, you know, each case these guys were praying and seeking after God. They were devout. The guy had the fear of the Lord. He was used of the Lord. God will speak to people that are seeking after him, that's for sure. Acts chapter 16, as you're following the way of the Lord, where they gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, God will say at times, don't do this. And so the Holy Spirit came and manifest, saying, don't preach the word in Asia. They came to Mysia and said to go into Bithia, and the Spirit suffered them not. No. They passed by Mysia and came down to Troas, and then a vision came. God can speak to you different ways at different times. We want to be sure we're hearing from the Lord before we make a move or make a decision. The vision appeared to Paul in the night, there stood a man of Macedonia, prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. After he'd seen the vision immediately, so now he knew what God wanted for him. We endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathered that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And so they went over there. God can also use situations to give you direction. Here's the case where here the Corinthians had believed when baptized. The Corinthians was a they were quite an unruly group. Verse 9, he said, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid of these people. But speak and hold not thy peace. Even though these people were quite an ungodly group in Corinth. He says, I'm with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And so that directed him and what he was to do. And what happened after that, he ended up being there for a year and six months, a year and a half, teaching the Word of God among them. But God got his attention, and through the vision, through speaking to him, showing him what he would have him to do. We also see that God will speak through dreams. 
You want to be sure that the dream is from the Lord. It'll be have a purpose for it of what God wants for you. There'll be a purpose for it. Matthew 1.20, here's while about Joseph. While he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Well, the purpose, obviously, so he wouldn't put her away. I mean, you know, she wasn't involved in any fornication or wrong type of relationship. There was a purpose. Chapter 2, down in verse 12, warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed in their own country another way. These are the wise men that came, and God warned them, say, don't go back to him. Go another way. And they were warned for the purpose of getting them out of that situation. And, that's, of course, that's what they did. They departed. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, getting him out of harm's way. God will speak to us at the appropriate time, some way, in this case it was in a dream, to get us out of harm's way, to tell us what to do. We don't want to get ahead of God. We don't want to get behind God. We want to make sure we're hearing from him. At the appropriate time, he will direct us what to do. <clears throat> and that's exactly what happened. And then when the time was right later, he heard that Ar Archelaus had did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod. He was afraid to go thither after, just after he was to come back in. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he told him to go to a different area, return to Sidon in the parts of Galilee. So God will direct you but we need to get direction from him. And he will speak to us in some way and we need to trust that he will lead you and guide you and bring revelation and speak to you the things that he wants. At the same time, we have to also understand that God expects us to walk in a right way. And we need to hearken and obey what he tells us to do. Here was back in 1 Kings chapter 3 talking about Solomon. Here's the first time when God, when God appeared to Solomon in a dream. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart with thee. Thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as at this day. And so here he, he talks about how he's a little child, doesn't know how to go out or come in. And so he says, the servants in the midst of the people that can't be numbered and accounted for multitude. So what's he asked for? He says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. Who's able to judge this so great a people? God will give you the ability, of course, to be able to discern between what's right, what's wrong, what's good, and what's bad. And that's what he did. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. At the same time, we see a later on situation down in chapter 9. When, remember, when God comes, there'll be a purpose. And we see here's a second time. 1 Kings 9, 2, The Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon, meaning it was a dream. That's what he did. So now he's got a second time appearing to him in a dream. And the Lord said to him, I've heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I've hallowed this house. This is after he completed the temple, which thou hast built. to put my name there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So he'd accomplished something, and now God's speaking to him. He said, If thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and uprightness, to do according to all that I've commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments, I'll establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Like he tell, told, here's the next step, what you're going to do. Promise to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But, at the same time, now he's going to give him a warning. But if you shall turn at all turn from following me, you or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I've set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight. Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And, and of course, he would end up losing the kingdom, and that's ended up what happened. He was warned before. God will tell us the good things he will do when we obey. He'll also warn us if we disobey. And he did this through 
a vision. We also see that God will speak in prophecy to us. He'll go speak in, in personal prophecy to you. A word can be given to you. 1 Timothy 1.18. There were some prophecies given to Timothy. He said, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies that went before on thee. Now, because they had prophecies that went before them, does that mean they're automatically going to come to pass? Oh, you got to be doing the word to see them, see what God wants to bring forth. That thou by them mightest war a good warfare. He was supposed to war a good warfare and carry out obedience to the things that God had directed him to do, what he should be doing. Now, prophecies are good. Dreams are good. Visions are good. All these things. We also have to beware that whether they're in line with the Word of God and whether they're right. One thing for sure, if someone speaks something to you that is of the Lord, that is going to happen, it will happen if it's of Him. If it's not coming to pass, there's a problem. Deuteronomy chapter 13, we see. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives thee a sign or a wonder even, See, you can't follow signs and wonders. You've got to make sure things are in line with the Word and they're, they are truly are of God. And the sign of the wonder come to pass, but this is a case where a sign or wonder could come to pass, but it was not in line with the Word. Where he spake unto them, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, let us serve them. Well, you know that's wrong. Just because it came to pass doesn't mean it's right if it's contrary to the word. You always have to judge things in line with the word. Thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. The Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God, fear him and keep his commandment, obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. You certainly got, got to seek after the Lord and to hear his voice and know what's the right thing to do. That prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. <laughs> People who tries to tell you contrary to the word, they're in trouble. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. You don't ever walk in anything contrary to the word. And the deceiving spirits are going to be coming forth. The false prophets be coming forth more and more in these last days. You cannot follow after them. So shalt shall, shall, shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. We also see over in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Here we speak. See it says in verse 19 of chapter 18, It shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken to my word which he has spake, spake in my name, I will require it of him. The prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. That's why you've got to be sure people are speaking right. If thou say in thy heart, how can we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speak of the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, this is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But if the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. People that tell you something's going to happen and it doesn't happen, there's something wrong. I just heard it the other day. Someone said you were going to have, that they told them they were going to have a, a particular situation that was going to occur at a particular time in their life, and it didn't happen. Well, that couldn't have been the Lord. It sounded good at the time, but it wasn't the Lord. If something is truly of the Lord, it's going to come to pass. That is important. So we got to make sure that we take a look at that. You know, some people just, they just want to follow whatever comes. <clears throat> and people can speak something sometimes that has a truth with it, but mixed in with something that's not true and it doesn't come to pass. They can have no, even no things about you. Well, those are people who have familiar spirits. And they're speaking from a familiar spirit, and they'll speak something they know, and it looks like it's right, but then some other things get mixed in that are not right, and it doesn't come to pass. Well, that's not good. 
We've seen people that have had, they haven't cast the familiar spirits out of them from however they came in in the past, whether it's from inheritance or their own sins, and those spirits have operated through them. They didn't pick up things, they didn't get these things cast out. They had wrong spirits coming through them. Just because someone knows something doesn't mean it's necessarily the Lord. They might know it from a familiar, familiar spirit. You don't let that capture you. You've got to check things out in line with the Word and pray and find out whether it is truly of the Lord or not. We also see Jeremiah addresses about these false prophets. Jeremiah 14, verse 14. <clears throat> the Lord said to me, The pro prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy you a false vision and divination, a thing of naught, and the deceit of their own heart. See, they might have gotten something false and then they spoke it, but it wasn't of God. That's why you've got to test everything to see whether it's of God, whether it's in line with the Word or not. And certainly, if it doesn't bring peace and it, it, is, it doesn't witness to you on the inside of you, there's something wrong. Because the Holy Spirit will always have a, he'll witness the things that are of him. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. They said, it's not going to happen. And it happened. <laughs> and of course, they got consumed themselves. You have to watch what people say. Because they don't, the law, many people speak things that are wrong. If it doesn't come to pass, something's wrong. Jeremiah 23, 21, he says, I've not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I've not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. If they'd stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should not have turned from them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Again, it's got to be in line with the word. That is the way you always check things out so you're not deceived in any manner. We come down to verse uh, uh, 16. Or go back to verse 16. He said, Hearken not the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Some people speak things out of their own heart. That's why you've got to watch. Is this coming from the Lord? Or is this maybe coming just out of me? No, that's why you got to be in the Spirit and be discerning these things properly. Verse 26, How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Again, they couldn't have their heart right with the Lord because they were picking up things that were not right. They were not from God whatsoever. He said, Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Again, if someone tells you something and it doesn't come to pass, there's a problem. False prophets. And we know false prophets are arising in the last days. They're here now. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. We see the false. That's why you've got to check everything out in line with the word. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. It's amazing how people can even get so deceived and turn away from things by following false doctrine. I heard another case. Oh, see, I get this, 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 this week, these ones, I'm telling you. And this is a case where someone believed a false doctrine that about marriage and divorce and believed that they were still married to their first spouse even though they'd been divorced and had been remarried because remarriage is not sin. We've talked about that in the past. So they believed the lie that they were supposed to divorce. So they got a divorce. Oh, you got a deceiving spirit come into you, you're in trouble. You think that's where the deceiving spirit's going to stop? The next thing happened is they ended up denying the Lord and turned and became Jews. 
went to Judaism and denied Jesus Christ as their Savior. You get to see one area, they'll start taking you down another way. Very sad that people will not listen to truth. And this person was warned. I talked to him myself and told him the truth and gave all the messages and said, this is a lie, this is false, this is wrong. And yet they went ahead and did it, contrary to the word of God. And now they're not even saved, they're in trouble. What a situation. We cannot follow things contrary to the word. False teachers, false prophets, those things, very sad. But we see many people have heard prophecies, they've heard voices, they've heard or had dreams and they thought it was God and, went, and then it didn't materialize. It couldn't have been the Lord. Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets that come into you in sheep's clothing, though they look like they're good, but inwardly they're ravening, ravening wolves, and they will speak wrong things. That's not to say that you don't listen to what God would, might speak to you through one who might have a revelation or a word from you, a prophecy or something, but you're going to have to be sure it's right. God will confirm it to you and show you beyond a shadow of a doubt it's so, and it will be in line with the word if it's of him. Don't just jump off the cliff on because someone told you something, you know, and I'm going to run with it, which is what people have done. Matthew 24, 11, Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. I remember another case years back where a person told someone, you're never going to be married. They were mad about it because they wanted to be married. Well, if you want to be married, God can give you the desire of your heart and bring the person as you pray for the come for to be the spouse. Well, they got mad about it. They got an attitude against God over it because they believed it was God. <laughs> and they were, they were not right. They believed this thing for years. Of course, that shut down anything. <laughs> and they never did get married because they believed a lie. It wasn't a true word whatsoever. Why? Because it's contrary to the word. You know, you desire a wife or a husband or whatever, you desire a good thing. It wasn't an unscriptural thing whatsoever. You gotta watch what you hear from people. Make sure it's in line with the word of God and anything that supposedly would be from the Lord, it should be absolutely confirmed. God will confirm it to you. So you'll know it's so. Ezekiel 13, verse 17. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. Anybody that prophesies out of their own heart, they're in trouble. So you got to check things out and be sure things are right. Well, how am I going to be in a position to hear his voice then? Well, you're going to get the word in you, right? We're going to check everything out in line with the Word. The other thing is you need to be getting in the presence of God to hear from Him, not just through the Word, but also through praising and worshiping God. Acts 13, verse 1, there were in the church, the, there was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Minion, which had brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, Praising and worshiping, ministering to Him. What happens when you minister to God? He ministers back to you. And fasted, shutting down the flesh. That silences the flesh so you can get in a position to hear. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work whereunto I've called them. You want to be sure you're seeking after God, not just re looking for some dream, vision, or voice to come to you or whatever all. If you're getting in the presence of God and doing the Word of God, then and God will speak to you. He'll show you things. And He'll bring revelation and show you the right way. Of course, another thing to get filled up with the Spirit is praying in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. He that speaks an unknown tongue edifies himself. It'll build you up. It'll bring a filling of the Spirit within you. Paul understood how important it was he said in verse 18, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. 
We need to speak in tongues to get the filling of the Holy Spirit for the influence of the Holy Spirit in our life, filled up with the Holy Spirit. And of course, you've got to be sure that you're right with the Lord. If you're walking in sin, you're, you're not going to hear right. You're deceived. Or if you've got your own agenda, and this is of your own thoughts about what you want, you're not going to be hearing right. You're not going to be led right. You've got to be living into Him and get His agenda. Many people think that they hear from the Lord when they've got their own kind of motive, own little ulterior, what they want. They kind of got their desire. No. You want to have His desire. You live unto Him is absolutely important. And you get yourself filled up with the Spirit, and you're walking in the Word, you're getting in the Word, you're doing what He wants you to do, He will speak to you. And when He speaks to you, there'll be a purpose. There'll be a reason. I mean, some people think they hear God tell me, oh, wear this tie, don't wear that color, uh, go turn right, turn left, uh, don't, turn, don't go down that road, and all these things. Was there any purpose to it? No. Was that God? No. And they're all they're left all over the place. If God's going to speak to you, there'll be a purpose. There'll be a reason. There'll be something that he wants to accomplish in you or through you. That's important. So you don't get led astray. Now, also, remember, if you are going to hear from the Lord, you've got to be ready to do what he says. If you're not ready to obey him, why should he speak to you? <laughs> well, I tell him, I want to hear from you, but I'll think about whether I'm going to do it. Well, that's not exactly living unto him, is it? No. Exodus 19.8, all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That's the attitude we have. Whatever God tells me to do, I'm ready to do it. Ananias said, here I am, Lord, ready to do it. When Samuel heard his voice, here I am, you know, and he's ready to do what God wanted him to do. We need to be ready to obey the voice of the Lord. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4. See, hearing and obeying the voice of the Lord, you're not just going to hear, you're going to obey. He said in Deuteronomy 14, 4, you shall walk after the Lord your God. These are all important things. Walk means, well, it means I'm walking in line with the word consistently. Fear God. I have the fear of the Lord, so I'm going to hate evil and not walk in sin. I'm going to delight greatly after his commandments. Keep his commandments. I'm doing his word consistently. Obey his voice, because who's going to be hearing his voice? The guy that's doing all these things. And what's the purpose? Not just so I can do what I want to do. No, you're going to serve him and you're going to cleave into Him. These are all principles that will show you what it's going to take. Certainly, this kind of guy, is going to, he's going to hear the Lord. He's ready to obey. He's ready to serve Him. He's ready to cleave into Him. He's ready to carry out the things of God. God just doesn't speak to you just to speak to you. He speaks to you for a purpose and for a reason. And He will make things clear. You've got to get revelation from Him on everything, though. Now, suppose you, you don't obey, <clears throat> and God does speak to you, expecting you to obey. Now, that's going to be trouble. Numbers chapter 14, verse 22. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and the wilderness, and tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. God told them what to do, and they wouldn't obey. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. They couldn't enter into the land. They died out in the wilderness. Here we come in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 20. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall you perish. Why? Because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Obedience. God expects us to obey Him, and then we're going to be blessed, and you'll see that in a moment. But we're looking at the ones who wouldn't obey Him right now. We see in chapter 9, verse 23, 
Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and you believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. You've been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and nights, as I fell down at first, because the Lord said he would destroy you. A destruction was going to come. These guys, of course, ended up all dying out in the wilderness. Even the guys that were trained up as men of war in Joshua chapter 5, verse 6, look what it says about them. The children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed. Why? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. You could be trained up in things, but if you don't obey, you can get consumed. Unto whom the Lord swear he would not show them the land. It's his Lord swear unto their fathers he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. It was his purpose to bring it to pass, but if we don't obey, it's not going to get done. We must obey what God wants. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the command of the Lord, then shall both you and also the king that reign over you continue following the Lord your God. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the command of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. I mean, God expects us to obey. You just don't just you know, think about whether you're going to do something or not. We need to be ready to obey the things that he wants. And then, what happened to these guys that were in the wilderness that they kept on murmuring, griping about everything? Psalms 106, verse 25. He murmured in their tents. They hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations, to scatter them in their lands. That's exactly what happened to them. We also see over in Jeremiah. Chapter 7. See, obedience to the voice of the Lord, whether it's the word or whatever it is, is what needs to happen. Jeremiah 7, verse 28, But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeys not the voice of the Lord, nor receives correction. Truth's perish and is cut off from their mouth. They wouldn't receive correction. That's why we continue to pray for God to bring the, the, the light, all the corruption and people to come to repentance and the fear of God to come upon all, all the people in this nation and give us righteous leaders and all these things. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 6. The Lord said, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of the covenant and do them. For I earnestly protested against your father in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even in this day rising early protesting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore, I'll bring upon them all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. So here, they got all these curses that ended up coming upon them. And all the judgments started to happen in their life. He says they got turned back in iniquities, they went after other gods, all these different things. And they saw all kinds of judgments that came. Over in Daniel, chapter 4, verse 31. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. He was warned. <laughs> he wouldn't obey. The kingdom was departed. What a mistake. We come over to the New Testament, you must realize that God is raising up his people in this last day. We're going to walk in his ways. And you and I must not refuse, we must hear his voice and refuse, not, never refuse his voice. Look what it says in Hebrews 12, 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. We won't. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now as he's promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. See, everything's going to be shaken. And this word, yet once more, signifies that I'm moving to those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. 
Well, if you're walking in his ways, you won't be shaken, and you will remain. Wherefore we receive in a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, with obedience. You can't follow your agenda. You've got to follow his agenda and do the things that he wants you to do. For our God is a consuming fire. He is going to have his people doing what he says. If you and I will obey and to accomplish the things that he purposes for us. Now, we also see all the great things that will happen if we obey, of course. In Genesis chapter 22, look about, look about Abraham. Abraham obeyed. And he said in verse 18, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed thy voice. When you obey his voice, you will be blessed. We even see that healing comes when you diligently hearken to his voice. Exodus 15, 26. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and to do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes, I'll put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Walking in line with the word of God and obeying his voice is tied into you being healed. And also that prophecy that was given to them that was to come to pass in the New Testament era, also had obedience involved in it. Exodus 19.5, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, keep my covenant, you'll be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, of all the earth is mine, and you'll be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you speak in the children of Israel. Well, obeying his voice and keeping his covenant is what you and I must do to see God accomplish what he purposes for all of us. We also see in Exodus over in chapter 23, verse 21, talking about the angel. If we go to verse, back on verse 20, Behold, I'll send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place that I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. If thou indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. If you want God to protect you, you're going to have to obey his voice. Many people want to claim that oh, God's going to have, the angels will have charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. That's a promise that will work if you obey. It's not a promise that will work just because you try to claim it. No, it's because you meet all the conditions in order to see it come to pass. My angel will go before thee. He'll bring thee all these en enemies, and you're going to cut them off. God will be an adversary, and you're going to fight against all the enemies. You're going to be involved in spiritual warfare to conquer every enemy. We also see, who are the ones that God's going to be with and watching over in the last days? Look what it says. Deuteronomy 4.30, when you're in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. Obedience. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he sware unto them. Because the judgments are going to come upon the world <laughs> and those who are not walking in the way of the Lord. And destruction will come. But for those who are following the Lord, they will be protected. We know in Deuteronomy 28, that, you know, the word... These promises work continually. Deuteronomy 28, 1, it will come to pass if you'll not hearken, if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, observe and do all his commandments which I command you this day, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. That's not just casually or if I have time or if it works for me or if it seems the right thing for me to do. No. We're talking about diligence, diligent obedience. That is what God wants for every one of us. Deuteronomy, excuse me, Jeremiah, I mean, chapter 7, verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. That's quite a statement. Otherwise, if you don't obey my voice, I'm not your God. And you shall be my people, 
and walk in all the ways which I've commanded thee, that it may be well with you unto you. It'll be well unto us if we obey his voice and if we walk in all of his ways. Obedience is the key to seeing all these blessings come to pass. We see it again over in chapter 11 and verse 4 where he says, I commanded your fathers the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people. I will be your God. God will manifest himself to those who obey. Remember what it says in the New Testament? What's the key that shows whether you and I are really following the Lord? 2 Corinthians 2.9, he says, For this end also I did write, that I might know the proof of you, whether you're obedient in all things. Tremendous results will happen. God's protection, His provision, His healing, His blessings will come on us and overtake us. He'll be our God. We'll see Him protect us in whatever situation in the end times if we're obedient to do all the things that He says. That is what must happen. And when you're obedient to what God says, whatever He has spoken in the Word, and you are acting upon those promises and taking hold of them, these things will come to pass. Joshua 21. We come down to verse 45. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass for the ones who obeyed, but not for the ones who didn't obey, they saw nothing happen whatsoever. You must understand in the last days, obedience must happen for those who are going to be a part of his mighty end time army. Joel chapter 2, verse 11. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Those are the ones that are in the army of the Lord. His camp is very great. He is strong that executes his word, that is doing his word, it means. So the guy who gets strong is the guy who's doing his word, and we need to get strong, as we talked about out of Hagehi. The Lord, that's the remnant, and the Lord's going to utter his voice before his army, because, I mean, you're in the army, you're, you've engaged in the army. You're not doing, serving yourself, you're serving the Lord. Because he's gonna, those are the ones that are going to hear his voice. Look what's going to happen in 316. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. The Lord's our hope. He's our protector. He's our strength. He'll enable us to come through in all these end time things that are going to happen. At the same time, you've got to get out of all the things that are not of God. You've got to get out of Babylon, the ways of the world. Revelation 18, verse 4, he says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Be not partaker of her sins that you receive not of her plagues. If we don't come out of all those things, we'll, whoever, any of the believers that are here will get hit with the plagues. This is talking about my people. Otherwise, it's not God's will for that. See, the plagues are going to come on everybody that's not right, whether you are ungodly or whether you're a believer or whatever. Only those ones that are walking right, that are not involved in walking in the ways of sin, they're the ones that will be protected. But the ones that aren't, they're not going to see the protection. And we want to end up going over to Hagehi again, which is so important to see because this is talking about the end times, and we are there. It talks about the remnant. All the remnant of the people they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts. Well, we do our work in, in our spiritual house to see the house of God be built in us to accomplish everything that he purposes. And we see in the seventh month, one and twentieth day of the month, which refers to the end of the church age, because this is when the end of the, the final three uh, Feasts are going to be fulfilled, and it's prophetic of what happens in the end of the church age. In the 21st day, seventh month is the last day of tabernacle, so this is the end of the church age. And he speaks to the residue, which is also the remnant of the people. 
Who's left among you saw this house in her first glory, and how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of nothing? The early church had the glory of God manifest mightily. They had the fear of God. They were protected. They saw God do tremendous things. People were being one to the Lord. Miraculous works were happening. It's going to happen again for the end time church. You've got to get strong, though. All, the, all of us got to get strong and work. Be doers, for I am with you. Those people, the doers, are the ones that are obedient, following the Word of God. You can't be afraid of all the things that are happening on the earth, because it will be quite a ride, that's for sure. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yes, in one little while, and I'm going to shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. This is coming. A tremendous shaking like there's never been. I will shake all nations. The desire of all nations shall come. Jesus is going to come to every nation and see if the bunch ones will turn to him or not. I will fill this house, the end time church, with glory. The glory of God, what's that? The manifest presence of God. Why would the manifest presence fill a house? Because they have met the conditions for that to happen. Not just because that's the time when he says he's going to do it, no, you've got to meet the conditions for it to happen because only the ones that are right are going to see this. Silver's mine, gold's mine, you'll provide. Glory of the latter house will be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place of the latter house, what's going to happen? I'm going to give peace, which is the word shalom. You must understand shalom is not just talking about peace. It's talking about completeness, soundness, welfare, safety, Wealth, health, prosperity, quiet. I mean, total work of God in your life across the board. The complete work will be accomplished. Oh, that's the church has gone into perfection. That is what God is going to do. He is going to do a tremendous work. Well, in, in seeing what's going to be important, if you're going to hear the voice of the Lord and be obeying it, of course, person gets born again, they receive the Holy Spirit, they get the Word in them. They have to keep and guard the Word in their heart. They've got to be true sheep. They can't be listening to the voice of strangers, and they can't be obeying them. They must continually hearing, be hearing and doing the Word, walking in the truth continually, doing the Word of righteousness, be a praiser and a worshiper of God, be watching and praying and listening to Him, met the conditions to hear the voice of the Lord, not hardening their hearts, as we've talked about, You'll enter into his rest. You'll possess the promises. You'll see God bring all he purposes. If we're disobedient, we're going, to be in the pro we're going to be left out in the wilderness and get destroyed by the destruction. If we're going to be a person who has a heart right with God and our minds focused on the spiritual things that we talked about, can't follow your desires or feelings, you trust in him, you get armed spiritually, you're going to be a part of the armor of God, you're a part of the remnant, and certainly, you're not going to walk in any sin, and you're not going to be walking in any false teachings, and you're not going to be in the army of the Lord whatsoever. We can't be rebellious. We can't be carnal. We can't be walking contrary to what He says. We need to be hearing what the Spirit says and following Him. We have to put away everything that's not of Him. Remember, God's a God who speaks in holiness. He's going to have a holy people, a holy nation, who are going to rise up. Without holiness, no man's going to see the Lord, remember. And we're not going to see a part of the glorious church if we're not. We are commanded to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to hear continually. He says to hear, if you will hear his voice. We must be in the position, be a praiser, a worshiper, pray in tongues, praise and worship him, be in the word, stay away from evil things, all get close to the Lord so you're the sheep following the great shepherd. You can't be listening to strangers can't be listening to watch fables. You can't have your own agenda. No. It's total submission. It's in the army. When you're in the army of the Lord, you're not doing what you want, are you? Or any army. No. You're doing what you're told. You and I must come to the place of total submission and yieldedness to God. It's the right way. God's going to use us mightily for those who come to the, meet those conditions in these last days. Hear the voice of the Lord. Be obedient. The blessings will come upon you. God will manifest himself. 
He will guard you, protect you. You'll be safe. You'll be protected. You'll be provided for. God will do tremendous things for the end time church who will obey him. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you that I will hear and obey the voice of the Lord because I will do what's necessary to be in that position as I have the word in me and I get filled with the Holy Spirit. I praise and worship. I pray in tongues. I separate myself from that which is unclean. I walk in the way of the Lord. I'm obedient in all things. I am ready to obey whatever he tells me to do. I don't have my own agenda. I don't listen to the flesh. I walk after the Spirit. I thank you that as I am obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit, I will see the work of God be done in my life. And I will be a part of this end time church that will be filled with the glory of God. Manifest mightily the greater glory upon the end time church. I thank you, Lord, that I will be a part of this church because I will do what your word says and see you accomplish your total work in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Ephesians 5.27 also tells us something, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Who's going to be presented to him? Only those that are in the glorious church. The rest of them are all going to be martyred out or died out or who knows what's going to happen to them. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but should be holy and without blemish. The holy church, you and I have been commanded to be holy. And that's the result of the fruits of righteousness in our life. That's why we do everything that the Word says. We totally live unto the Lord and we let Him have His way and we need to hear His voice and obey it. And we'll see the great results. And here's the, the final result. Being presented unto the Lord to be with Him in the rapture of the church. Father, we thank You for all You brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of this Word. We will see ourselves grow up in all things and come to the place of no spot, no wrinkle, holy, without blemish, so we can be a part of this glorious church and be presented unto Jesus at His coming. I thank you, Father, for the mighty work that you're doing in every single one of us. We will hear and obey the voice of the Lord and see your great results come to pass in our life as we are hearers and doers of this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.